This is my English Monotype Composition Caster, and today I'll be test fitting some parts for it that I've made for a friend. I already have a set of these parts which are made for my own use, but for this demonstration I've removed them from my caster. The parts are related to this pump latch mechanism, which gives the caster a fast pump stroke, even when running at low speeds. This page, from the English Monotype Spare Parts Manual, shows most of the parts that make up the display attachment for the English caster, used for casting sorts in sizes generally 14 points up to 36 points. These parts form the manual sizing mechanism for determining the width of the cast types. These parts allow the caster to cast and deliver larger sizes of type from the mold to the galley. These parts provide more force holding the mat down against the pressure of the molten type metal, and these parts provide a mechanism to delay the pump stroke until some pressure is built up in the pump spring, then releasing it to produce a very rapid filling of the mold cavity. Only the rod in the center of the pump spring is a special part for display casting. The spring, adjusting nuts, and abutment are illustrated to provide some visual context for the rod. While most of the parts shown in this page are strictly for display casting, some of them, including the pump latch, are also used for large composition work. Most of the parts shown here are distinctive enough not to be lost in the jumble when a caster is broken down for parts. The exceptions are the sleeve B20H7 and the extended piston spring rod C20H1, which are easily mislaid. One is just a plain tube, and the other is just a rod threaded at both ends. Even if recognized as a pump spring rod, it can be confused with the standard spring rod unless compared side by side. The result is that if your caster is missing this latch mechanism, you still stand a chance of finding one in the parts stock of a fellow caster owner because it is easy to identify on sight. But the sleeve and extended spring rod are, can be harder to find because of their nondescript appearance, and without them, the latch cannot be used. On this caster, the latch is installed, but because the piston spring abutment is in its original position, there is no place for the latch to detect the compression of the spring. As a result, this uh, latch mechanism here, this actual trigger for the latch, is just turned aside, and it can't actually fit over the spring. The parts I have made are this replica of the spacer sleeve, using a link just estimated off the spare parts manual drawings, and this extension for the spring rod, which gives it about the same amount of spring tension as you would get with nothing special installed. The length of this rod is really the difference in length between the standard spring rod and the one supplied by Monotype for display casting. My lathe isn't big enough to be able to actually make an entire long spring rod. The first step to install these parts is to remove the pump springs. I remove the lock nut and drop it, and the rod nut from the top of the spring. And then the two strings are removed and set aside. Next, to unscrew this spring rod from the rod eye at the bottom that, it's, that threads into, um, there's no, nothing here to grip with a wrench. You can use locking pliers to do it, but you'll end up scarring the, the metal with, two, with uh, gouges from the teeth. Uh, one thing to try is to put the two adjusting nuts on, tighten them tight against each other, and then use them as a wrench to undo the bolt, the bar. Now, this rod isn't very tight because I had it out just a little while ago to take up my own upgrade parts. Now, if you do use locking pliers, you're going to end up with a little scarring here wherever you apply them. And you should use a file to take that off so the springs can slide on the rod smoothly and not have any burrs to snag on. And the other thing is, because I have the rest of everything assembled here, the uh, rod eye at the end can't turn because of the various linkages, so I don't have to hold that against the, the torque when I'm loosening this. Now the rod extension just screws onto the end of this.
Now I do have flaps on this, so the 916 wrench will fit. So you can snug it up a bit that way, and again using the these nuts to hold things. Now, in the long run, I recommend using a, a temporary thread locking compound in this joint. That way later on, if you go to take this rod out of the caster, you're not left with this extension stuck down here where you can't get it out easily. Essentially, it'll make this act as one unit, one long rod. Now this part is called the spring abutment, and it just lifts off the top of the upper cross block here. It actually has a little ridge machined on it here to actually make it fit in to this sleeve neatly and not and or neatly and not slide around. So to install things, once you've got everything taken apart, the first thing to do in my case is to turn this latch so that it It's a bit of a snug fit. So that these prongs here are centered over the spring mechanism. Then the sleeve, the sleeve goes in and it just drops right into the top of the cross block. And this sits on top. Now that, that raises this abutment by about two and three quarters of an inch, which is the same as the added length from the extension on the rod. And finally, to reassemble everything, the rod just screws back into the rod eye. And again, the, the whole assembly is stopping the rod eye from turning in this process. So now that this rod is tightened down, I can take the two adjustment nuts off the end again. And you probably can't see this because it's behind the bar feeder. And then the springs go on again. And the adjusting nut, or as the manual calls it, the rod nut. And the lock nut. And again, you would adjust this nut to give you the spring tension you want. So here's everything all assembled. Uh, when you're not using the latch because you're doing composition casting, this little trip lever holds this up and the latch doesn't catch on anything and it operates normally. And when you are doing large composite, large composition or display casting, you trip this down and the latch now essentially prevents the piston from operating until the upper cross block has come up enough to do this. No, not that far. It only has to move about a couple of millimeters to, to release the latch. And as soon as that happens, all the pent-up force in the pump spring is released, and the pump pumps essentially instantly. And all these parts seem to fit, so I guess they're ready to take off and ship off. So these two parts are ready to ship off now. They seem to fit my machine, so they should work just fine.